we're back for the second part of um, my React, React Native Refresher. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff in this upcoming video. Um, I'm going to try to get it all in one video. But um, what we've done is, as you can see here, we've integrated a login screen and a create account screen. Um, I will show you how this works by creating an account. So, aamail.com. Let's do this. A10 password. AARON. And create account. And so now we've actually created an account. And so what I've implemented here is I've integrated Superbase. So we'll see how that's done. Um, you can see I have the email address here in my header. So I've also implemented a drawer, which we didn't have in the last application. And then also inside of the drawer, I've created a profile screen. So you can see in the profile screen, I'm pulling all of the uh, user information based on the user that was created. Um, you can also see down here, I've had a few extra streams. I've implemented a custom drawer renderer because you can see I have this logout button here on the bottom. And uh, when I log out, it logs me out and takes me back to the home screen. So I've also implemented kind of showing you how to manage different um, stacks that you render based on the login state or logout state. Um, and then what else? Let's see if I can aa10 at mail.com. And uh, a tenant mail.com. Let's try this password again. And you, uh, so now I've logged in, and then what I wanted to show was how I'm keeping track of the login state. So if I refresh, and you can see it automatically recognizes that I was logged in already, and um, my login information is back. So this is what we're going to cover in this next video. So hang on, and let's uh, get ready to hop into the code. Um, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to modify our drawer so we can put the button on the bottom. And to do that, we're going to need a custom component to draw to allow us to draw eh, allow us to draw the drawer content. And the two key things that we're going to need is we're going to need a drawer content scroll view and a drawer item list. So let's just import them. Also, a lot of this is coming directly from the um, React Navigation. Uh, documentation, so please feel free to also utilize that as a reference. I'm literally just kind of walking through what they're doing here, but kind of doing it in a video form. Uh, this is all leading up to a more complex application that I'm trying to build, uh, but this is a step that I need to take uh, to accomplish my goal. All right, so right now in the drawer stack navigator, as you can see here, we're just drawing these elements. Um, there is an additional property that we have on here called drawer content that allows us to provide another component that will actually draw the content um, that appears in a drawer. Um, the, it's, I'm just going to copy the name here for it. I'm just going to call it um, custom drawer content. So let's create that function. Function custom drawer content. And this thing is going to return like most uh, JavaScript components. Uh, sorry, like most React components, it's going to return some content. And then we also need to make sure up on top here that we're getting the props that get passed in because those props are going to be needed. So let's put our props, pass in our props. Now, to make this work, as I said, we've imported a we've imported some other library, uh, some other elements. And one of the first elements that we need is this drawer content scroll view. And that's the view that all the items that we're going to put in the drawer are going to live inside of. So let's that in place now. And so we have this, uh, this drawer content scroll view. It's going to take the properties and hopefully it's going to draw something for us. So right now it should be empty. So as you can see, there's nothing inside of the view. So we need to actually add some content inside of this view now. And what we want to do clearly is we wanted to draw, uh, I keep saying drawer, I'm getting it messed up. We wanted to draw the items that were already getting passed in. And so the way to do that is to use this other draw item list component that we were given. We're going to wrap that in a view because we clearly want to put some style on it to make it look right. So we drop that in there. We wrap the view. Let's format that a bit. And so what's happening is this is taking the items that got passed in and it's going to render them. So let's see what we got now. 
And so we now have our items back and they're kind of doing what we want them to do and that's great. But the point is I want to add a button on the bottom and I want to clear out some space at the top um, for a header that we're going to add later. So what I want to do is outside of this view, I'm going to drop my button in and I'm going to kind of create a view and kind of move it up from the bottom and put a button inside of there. And then I'll do the same thing on the outside. I'll create another view where I'll put my header. So to kind of explain what I'm talking about, let's kind of put this in here. We're going to say view and then let's do some text. And then in here, let's go up and say header. Let's kind of wrap this at the bottom. And then down here, we're going to put another view. And inside of this view, we're going to put a button. And this button is going to be, let's give it a title. It's going to be our logout button. Let's kind of save and see clearly we're going to have that. So you can see my headers appearing there, my logout buttons at the bottom. Um, we're going to need to add some styles to kind of clean all this up right. But the idea is that you can see I now have, well, let's, let's do an on press in here. On, on press, we need to do some stuff. Oh. The other thing that we want to do is on the press, we need to definitely make sure that we close the drawer no matter what happens. So we're going to do a close the drawer first and then um, we're going to close the drawer first and then after the drawer is closed, we this is like do logout code here. Right? Um, so let's kind of refresh this to see if we get what we want. So if I went here, I click my logout button, you see it closed the menu, then we execute the logout code. So we have our button in here. And then up at the top, my header is hidden up there, so let's put some styles on this header to kind of give us some room. Um, I'm not going to sit here and type all of them, so I'll just kind of paste in the styles that I've already created to kind of get this to give us the view that we want. Let's go on the bottom. Here's my existing styles. Let me paste in the appropriate styles. Where's my header? Draw a header. Copy that. All right, so we were almost there. We got to draw a header, but now I need a little bit more space at the top to bring my header down. So as you can see, it's still all caught up in top there. So how did I move that guy? Give me a second. Oh, I see what I did wrong. This, uh, my header belongs inside of here. There we go. And so now I have my header at the top and then I have my list items here and my profile and I have my home. And I wanna add one other screen because I'm gonna use it later in the application. Um, it's it's called, gonna be called the help screen. So let's copy, bring that screen over here. Paste the help screen in and then we are going to add that down here as part of um, the children that get passed in. Let's go back to our drawer stack. We add this other one here. Refreshed. And so now you can see I have my home, my profile, my help, my header, which I'll put some content in, and then my logout button that I call to actually execute my logout. And so that's how you can kind of add custom buttons and space in there. Let's put some style around that button down there at the bottom, kind of move that up where it needs to be. Oh, I don't want it on my button. I actually want it on the view to kind of push my view up a bit. All right, so now my button's kind of moved up a little bit there. So this is kind of the design that we're looking for. And that's, well now since we have a logout, clearly it's time for me to um, integrate. So let's go back home. It's time for me to integrate the other stacks that we need. So if we go back to our app right now, we'll see right now we just have a home screen stack. Um, in 
I've already kind of paste, created this basic code here, but here's a basic code for an authentication stack. It has a login screen, it has a create account screen, and we want that stack to render. So like if I, let's, just to show you what I'm looking for, let's comment this out. Let's go with, uh, I believe it's our stack. So we put that our stack in here. Let's import it. My our stack. Um, save. My our stack is not in the right place, so let's move it up here inside the screens where it belongs. Let's move it. Uh, this guy really needs to be renamed to be consistent, so let's rename this to auth stack. Export create account screen, export login function. All right, I'm not actually exporting an auth stack yet, so let's get the let's actually export the stack um, so that someone can use it. And we want to do a couple of things inside of here. Uh, we can follow the let's follow the pattern that we're using here in our home stack just initially to keep it straight. So we're creating a navigation stack and then we're going to export it. So let's copy this out here. Let's go to our auth stack. So we got everything here. Let's create that stack. Do the return. We're going to call this auth stack auth stack. And then this guy is actually the auth sorry, auth screen stack. So this is the stack and this is the off-screen stack. And then inside of here, we you know follow the exact same pattern that we normally use, which is you have the navigator. So we're going to turn our return our navig our, uh, return our navigator, and then inside of that net, let's wor we'll worry about the errors later. Inside of that, then we define our screen. So we're going to say off stack dot screen, right? And then we have our name. Then we already have created our login screen component, and that's what we want here. Let's add that up, and then we also need our create account. So, and then we export the, the screen stack. Uh, what else is there? Anything else we need right now? We end that. We end that. Our stack. Our screen stack. Export our screen stack. Let's go back to my app. And I want to export a screen stack to stay consistent. That's what was wrong. And then now let's rebuild all this and see if we get a better outcome. All right, what am I missing? Uh, can't find variable React. So I did not import React up at the top. So that's what's going on there. Okay. In my opinion, it's in the right place. Okay, so now you can see we're seeing our login. I uh, can't navigate with payloads. Let's see, what did I do on my login? Create account. This is wrong. This create account should navigate to create. Uh, create. Uh, let's try this now. So now I'm at my create account screen, and I go back. Um, so this is kind of the basics. So what you see now is and if we're following the documentation, what we really want to do here is we want to be able to control which one gets rendered based on the user's authentication state. Um, since I'm on a roll, I'm just kind of moving right into this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some state variables to keep track of things. And let's make sure we add our imports. And then what we're going to do is we'll keep track of the authentication state to determine which screen should be shown. And we're going to do that by just using a ternary operator. So let's get this out of here. Let's get this out of here. Get rid of that, that. And then we're going to say auth. So basically, if auth is true, then auth's true, render the home screen stack, otherwise, render login stack. And so let's go in here and let's first let's set auth to true. And you can see I'm on my home screen. And then if I set off the false, I'm on my login screen. Now clearly we don't want to be in here flipping this around. So what we need to do is create some, uh, integrate some sort of authentication mechanism. And what we're going to do with that is I'm going to introduce a super base. 
I'm not going to go through the whole setup of Superbase. I'll create some links to some other videos I have on how you can set up Superbase for authentication. We're just going to use an existing project and integrate Superbase authentication into the application. So um, that'll be the next part of the video.